many people, when they wander through this scientific site, wonder what the whale is doing up here. And um, it's obviously a very good place to store the whale because it's well sheltered there, whale skeleton. But in fact, um, the reason is that underneath it is the Museum of Zoology. And zoology was one of Cambridge's great subjects and still is. Many famous zoologists have been here, but the most famous, of course, is Charles Darwin. Charles Darwin was an undergraduate, as he admits, a rather idle undergraduate, but he was taught by Cambridge scientists like Adam Sedgwick and Henslow, who instilled an interest and curiosity, even if he didn't work very much, and then later he went on to on the voyage of the Beagle and developed his theory of natural selection, evolution of species, mm -hmm. out of that experience, out of his teaching at Cambridge, and out of the influence of another great Cambridge theoretician, um, T.R. Malthus, who was at Jesus College, and it was reading Malthus's Principles of Population, which suddenly gave him the clue to how species die out very quickly, high mortality rates. And so his realization of the mechanism of selection came out of joining together a tradition in Cambridge economics and Cambridge zoology. Simultaneously, far away in another part of the world, Wallace, A.R. Wallace was reading Malthus and came to the same conclusion. And they came to the conclusion about the origin of species more or less simultaneously. And in this museum here, the zoology museum, a lot of Darwin's objects are to be found here and uh, it's a very nice small museum. This whole site is called the New Museums site because it was here that Cambridge Science was founded. We'll go and have a look at the old Cavendish which is another part of it. But there were a whole lot of museums founded here which as I mentioned are the origins of modern laboratory science in Cambridge.